In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and welcome to this, the third in our series of Reflections for Holy Week, a series of reflections from people who surrounded Jesus at the time of his Passion. And today, Wednesday in Holy Week, we're going to be thinking about the perspective of the centurion, the soldier who was there, part of the team who crucified Jesus and who watched him die on the cross. But first, I'm going to read from the 23rd chapter of the Gospel of St Luke. When they came to the place which is called the Skull, there they crucified him and the two criminals, one on the left and one on the right. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. The people stood by watching, but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him vinegar, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the multitudes who assembled to see the sight, when they saw what had taken place, returned home beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance and saw these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Voices at the Cross, the Centurion. He wasn't the first I'd crucified, either here or in other parts of the empire. Been around, I have, right up to that wet and windy wall and down south into Egypt. Have I seen some sights? Not that I actually did the nailing myself, not this one. It's not really centurion's work. The legionaries get to do that business usually. They're hard nuts. It doesn't seem to affect them at all. They just get on with the job, as if they were nailing two bits of wood together. They've had a lot to do round here recently. The Jews are always causing trouble. It's not a pleasant death, but then it's not meant to be. It's better than guerrilla fighting and just as effective at keeping the natives from getting too restless. As long as you nail up a few of the ringleaders in a good prominent place, right at the beginning of an insurrection, you generally don't get much trouble. But this one, this one was different. I can't tell you how he was different exactly. He just was. Not that the others were all the same. Some give in to the pain and hardly make a sound, or they faint, but quite a lot curse and swear. They curse and swear enough to make your mother blush 
right up to the end. No, this Jesus, he was quiet most of the time, though you could tell he was feeling the agony. Some of them get their friends to drug them up, but he was conscious all right. He put up with a lot of jeering from the crowd. They knew about his miracle working, and so did the two who were crucified with him. But when one of them started on at him, he didn't answer back, only spoke gently to the other one, as if he were a king granting a favour. Yes, that's what he was like, stuck up there in pain and squalor, bound to die sooner or later, with that twisted crown on his head. He was still like a king. He might have been accepting tribute from us, not death. And then there was that last cry. It was a shout of triumph. I didn't catch what he said. My Aramaic isn't all that good. But you could tell. He had chosen. It was his time to go. It was almost as if it was nothing to do with us. It was in his eyes. We were just a means to his glorious end. That's when I really looked up at him, looked deeply into his eyes, just before he took his last breath. And I knew that this was no ordinary man. It could have finished me. I could have lived the rest of my days in horror for what I'd done, been part of. But as he looked at me, I knew that he forgave me. He knew that I had no idea really what I was doing, and I knew that somehow I was part of something, some plan, something beyond anything I could understand, anything I could ever dream of. So let us pray. God of eternity, whose plans have been made since the beginning of time, show us the way you have marked out for us. Make clear the path, lest we stumble, or go wandering into dead ends. For the sake of him who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Now a prayer for us this Holy Week. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility, and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Now, a prayer for those in any kind of need or difficulty at this time. Heavenly Father, we bring before you all those who are anxious, all those who are ill, all those who are lonely or depressed. We ask that you would be with them, that you would give them your comfort and consolation. May the message of your Son, Jesus Christ, loving each and every one of us, even unto death, may be a message that brings hope and peace into their lives. 
We pray for all who seek to bring help to those in need. At this time we pray especially for our doctors and nurses and social care staff. We pray that you would keep them safe, that you would give them courage and perseverance, that you would give success to their efforts to bring healing to those whom they serve. And we pray at this time for our government, both national and local. Grant unto them wisdom, that they may make good decisions as we navigate our way through the current coronavirus pandemic. That help would be there for those at the margins of society, for those suffering financial hardship, for those struggling to keep businesses running. And we pray for all families at this time. We pray for children, for their work, for the teachers that who now instruct them by social media and the internet. We pray for those living in cramped conditions. Lord, give them grace that they may deal patiently and peaceably with each other. And grant to all of us a willingness to love and to serve those around us in any kind of need. And Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have recently died including those who have died of the virus. We pray that you would welcome them into your everlasting arms of love and peace. So may they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. We gather up all of our prayers in the words that your Saviour Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So may the Lord be with you this day, through the rest of Holy Week, and into the morning light of Easter time. Keep safe and God bless. May the angels surround you and protect you. May the saints pray for you. May the Holy Mother of God be alongside you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen.